As of 1913, Russia was under the rule of the Romanov dynasty for 300 years. Throughout 1613 to 1913, the Tsars or rulers of Russia shifted into the country it became. Tsar Peter the First reformed Russia significantly by commissioning the Russian Navy, reducing the power and influence of the Russian Orthodox Church over Russia, and annexing the Baltic states, which officially made Russia an empire. However, his successors would leave a legacy of repression on the Russian people. The Russian involvement in World War One ended the Tsars, but the Napoleonic Wars and Crimean War deteriorated the Russian economy and military. In 1849, Nicholas II was crowned Tsar of Russia. He was a weak leader, and his wrong decisions would cost him his empire. The Russian economy was bad when he came to power, but the Russian Empire was also poorly industrialized. However, Russian Prime Minister Sergei Vitae would convince the Tsar to begin industrialization to produce agricultural hardware, military hardware, etc. These factories were given to individuals as property for easier running of it. However, these factories, along with normal goods, would produce hardware for the government. The workers in these factories, though, were treated poorly. They had to work in unclean factories, had to work about 11 hours a day, and had the lowest wages in Europe. Agriculture too was lacking, with serfdom, the system where both land and labor are hereditary, dominating Russian agriculture, causing stagnant production and resentment towards peasants. Opposition to the Tsar The main opposition to the Tsar were reformers slash liberals. They were willing to work with the Tsar to improve and modernize Russia. The second were revolutionaries. They were willing to bring about complete change in society and wanted to end the autocratic system. There were two major groups in revolutionaries. Social revolutionaries, agrarian socialists who were willing to reform agriculture and redistribute land among the peasants. Social democrats, Marxists who wanted to replace the economic structure from a capitalist market-based economy to a centralized planned economy. They also wanted to end the autocratic system. One such political party was the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party, advocated towards implementing Marxism in Russia. It was formed at Minsk, Belarus in 1898. In 1903, Vladimir Lenin joined the party. However, in 1905, the party would split into two factions over arguments on policies. The radicals, or Bolsheviks, were led by Lenin and Alexander Bogdanov, while the conservatives, or Mensheviks, were led by Julius Martov. Some differences. Only the divide was created in 1905, but the party didn't split into factions until 1912. Communism, an economic system where the community collectively owns the means of production and every individual contributes as much as possible and only takes what he needs in return. Socialism, an economic system where the means of production are owned by the government of the people. The 1905 revolution. In 1904, the Russo-Japanese war broke out over disagreements on Japanese claim on Korea by Russia. The Japanese military defeated the Russians, thus humiliating the Russian people. On 22nd January 1905, a priest named Father Gabon marched to the Winter Palace with peasants and workers in a peaceful protest for better working conditions in factories and better land reform. However, the military showed up on the scene and shot at the protesters. Following this tragedy, the 1905 revolution had begun. Strikes and protests by peasants, workers and liberals broke out across the empire. The peasants demanded land, workers demanded better working conditions and liberals demanded political power. The Tsar outplayed the protesters by ending the rebellion one by one. The Tsar ended liberal opposition by creating a parliamentary Duma which had the power to pass legislation by a majority vote. However, the Tsar still remained in absolute power by dissolving the Duma whenever they disagreed with him on policies and replacing them with the loyal one. He suppressed working class uprisings with military force, ending the rebellion. After the 1905 revolution, the Tsarevich Alexei fell sick. The Tsar and his wife were horrified, finding out he had inherited Haemophilia B from his mother granddaughter of Queen Victoria. The following years, a holy mystic healer had wandered into St. Petersburg called Grigory Rasputin. He was a peasant who supposedly had holy powers to heal anyone. Tsarina Alexandra was in desperate will for the recovery of the Tsarevich and invited him to the royal residence, the Winter Palace. Surprisingly, he cured the Tsarevich, gaining the trust of the imperial family. The peasants within the empire considered Rasputin one of them 
while several high-ranking officials were opposed to Rasputin staying near the royal family. Rasputin ruined the imperial family's reputation, damaging their support within Russia. The Tsar also installed Peter Stolypin as the Prime Minister. He introduced massive agricultural reform, improving the legal and economic status of the peasantry. The Tsar had survived the 1905 revolution. In 1913, celebrations happened across Russia, celebrating the 300-year Romanov rule in Russia. However, this glory and power of the Russian Empire would soon be put to a test. In 1914, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. Russian Tsars considered themselves as protector of all Slavs and soon mobilized for war. The Russian military was massive but lacking proper equipment. The Russian military came up with a plan to send two Russian armies to East Germany and two Russian armies to Austria-Hungary. The plan worked at first with initial success, but the advance came to a grinding stop on the first battle of Tannenberg, led by General Paul von Hindenburg and Erich Ludendorff, which almost destroyed the entire Second Army. However, the war changed after 1917. The Brusilov offensive was the last successful push against Germany after which the military collapsed, beginning the February Revolution. On 8th March 1917, thousands of workers protested the Russian involvement in World War I. Military leaders knew that if the Tsar abdicated, the people would negotiate. Thus, on 15th March 1917, Nicholas II abdicated, ending the 300-year Romanov rule in Russia. After the abdication of the Tsar, the Duma formed the provisional government and the Mensheviks formed local elected councils called Soviets. The Duma and the Soviets worked as an oligarchy, with the Duma controlling national and international affairs like foreign trade and diplomacy, while the Soviets controlled domestic affairs. The Soviets had allegiance to the working class, which would be beneficial for them. In April 1917, Lenin returned to Petrograd. He did this with the help from the German military, who believed Lenin would keep the provisional government involved while the Germans continue their invasion. He returned in April when he wrote his April Theses, in which he advocated for his Bolsheviks to unite and overthrow the provisional government. He also demanded the provisional government for the war to be put to an end, redistribution of land among peasants, and stockpiling of food supplies. These demands became the Bolshevik slogan of peace, land, and bread. However, soon after Lenin's return, the chairman of the provisional government, Alexander Kerensky, banned the Bolshevik party, fearing communist insurrection. He also arrested the party members and declared Lenin as a German spy, forcing him to go into hiding in Finland. However, even with the Bolsheviks gone away, the provisional government was failing. With the failed Kerensky offensive against Austria-Hungary in 1917 July, the July days had begun which caused huge strikes and revolts, leading to further food and supply shortages. In August 1917, General Kornilov, along with the military, attempted a coup against Kerensky. Kerensky feared being overthrown and asked the Bolsheviks to help him defeat Kornilov. They did so with ease, since Kornilov's forces were poorly trained and under-equipped. This event portrayed the Bolsheviks as heroes and boosted their popularity and support. This also secured the Bolsheviks 90% of the seats in the Petrograd Soviet and also 60% of the seats in the Moscow Soviet. Lenin had returned to Petrograd in October 1917, uniting his Bolsheviks against the provisional government. Thus, in October 1917, the Bolsheviks, along with its Red Guard or Red Army, attacked Petrograd, obtaining full control of the city within a day. Finally came the storming of the Winter Palace, where the provisional government resided. The Red Army or the Red Guard stormed the Winter Palace, arrested the provisional government and officially declared themselves as the government of Russia. In 7th November 1917, the Russian Soviet Republic was formed. Soon after this, the Bolsheviks introduced socialism. Banks were nationalized, industries were nationalized, land was redistributed to the peasants and elections were held. The Bolsheviks soon had more problems though. The Germans were steadily advancing and the Bolsheviks had promised the people peace. Thus, the foreign minister, Leon Trotsky, and a team of delegates made peace with Germany at the Brest-Litovsk Treaty, which gave Germany most of Eastern Europe. However, this peace was criticized as it lost Russia a lot of land, population, and resources. After this, a number of anti-Bolshevik forces united against Lenin, forming the White Army whose primary objective was to restore the monarchy. The Bolsheviks too countered this by officially declaring the Red Army. 
the Bolshevik Red Army had geographical advantage, controlling smaller territory which was highly industrialized. The civil war which followed was brutal. However, the Bolsheviks eventually won due to superior military tactics and hardware, along with well-trained soldiers. While the whites were poorly equipped, undertrained, and lacking strong central leadership. During the civil war, the Tsar and his family were murdered at Yekaterinburg. The civil war increased inflation, caused about 5 million deaths, and destroyed a lot of infrastructure. On 30th December 1922, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics was officially formed. In 1921, Lenin introduced the new economic policy at the 10th Congress of the All-Russian Communist Party. According to this policy, large-scale industries like banks and foreign trade would remain nationalized, while smaller and medium-scale businesses were legal to be under private ownership. Peasants would control their own land and would give up produce to the state, but could engage in private trade by paying a tax only a certain amount of the harvest. It introduced state capitalism, the last stage of capitalism before socialism evolved, which introduced government ownership of the means of production. The policy restored industrial and agricultural production rates to pre-1913, maybe even higher, and saved the Russian economy. A new member would begin to gain influence within the Communist Party. Joseph Stalin was a former gangster and fundraiser for the Bolsheviks in Switzerland. He was made General Secretary of the party in 1922. The job of General Secretary gave Stalin not any great powers but allowed him to expand his influence within the party. As General Secretary, he could give jobs to newcomers. This way, he could influence them into becoming his supporters. He would also give good job to his allies within the government, like Kalinin, the former mayor of Leningrad. Stalin had four major opponents though. Grigory Zinoviev, chairman of the Third International, Lev Kamenev, leader of the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic, Nikolai Bukharin, well-respected editor of the Bolshevik newspaper and co-author of the ABC of Communism, Leon Trotsky, foreign minister and commander-in-chief of the Red Army. Both Zinoviev and Kamenev formed a troika with Stalin and overthrew Trotsky. All three, Zinoviev, Kamenev and Bukharin, fell out on arguments over the new economic policy. Both Stalin and his comrades wanted an agrarian policy of collectivization to centralize agriculture. Soon, three of them were overthrown and Stalin assumed full power. After coming to power, Stalin made rapid change. By 1928, he repealed the new economic policy and replaced the agrarian system with a policy of collectivization. He also began a series of mass industrialization called the Five-Year Plans. 